My name is Derek. I'm Dominique. This is Isabella. And Damien. And we're in Sunny the Schoolie. Uh, this is the front of our bus. Um, it was really important for me because we're traveling with kids to make sure that my kids were um, safely secured in seats. So we have car seats for both of our kids. Um, I have a seat which is called a Friedman fold away and um, this seat tips down and becomes a full two-seater um, seat that has child locks on it. It's got shoulder straps so if somebody um, is bigger is going to use it and it really gets out of our way when we're stopped. Um, so that was really important for me. I wanted everybody to be buckled up safely. Um, where we're from in Quebec, Canada, they require that you have seats for everybody, for every bed. Um, so I needed to have three extra seats. The other one over here we pulled out of a minivan and it functions just like a minivan. It's got the shoulder strap. Um, we built a custom frame as well over the wheel well. We didn't know what to do over the wheel well, so this actually worked pretty well. And um, it's also bolted through the floor. And then our seat, when it folds down, it will lift up and we can, we can actually uh, pull it out of the, um, of the bus if we ever need to do any maintenance um, on that. But it was really important for us to have seat belts. We have the couch that I built as well. It has a little arm storage in it. Storage is so important everywhere we go. So we put our toques and our hats in, in here, our beanies, um, and that works out nice. We did lose a little bit of space on the couch, but the storage is so important um, that we also have storage underneath here. So, so instead of having one whole piece, I cut it into three little sections so that it was easier to lift up. It's big enough to sleep on, um, but it doesn't pull out into a bed. We had our cushions made. And it was pretty cheap to make them. I was surprised. We just went to a foam shop and they cut it and made it with the fabric that they had. And then we chose to go with a table that flips down. So when we're driving, we flip it down. And sometimes when the kids are in here, we'll flip it down and they'll have more space to play. Welcome to our kitchen. Our kitchen was a really important part of our build. We have two kids and myself who love to eat. And um, Dominic, likes to cook in a nicer open space. Um, we also made sure that we had a 24 inch apartment style stove and oven because we like cookies. <laughs> and we needed a cookie sheet, a full cookie sheet needed to fit in this oven. And we looked at the same stove um, at 20 inches, but the cookie sheet just wasn't gonna fit. I also did all drawers where I could do drawers. The only place is under the sink where I didn't do drawers, um, but the rest of them have full length opening drawers and they hold a lot of stuff. We did um, a deeper sink. At the beginning, we wanted to do a really nice big sink. And so we went with a much smaller sink than what we were anticipating in the beginning. Like we wanted a really big one. Sometimes when we're not hooked up, we use a bucket inside of our sink to do our dishes just because you lose so much water. And when you're moving your water around, it's really important to conserve water. So if you're thinking of a big sink, see how much water you're gonna be able to use in that sink. Cause it takes a lot to fill it up two or three inches. Uh, we have 145 gallon fresh water and then we have a 90 gallon gray water tank. That does, you know, maybe three weeks uh, if we're not doing laundry every day. I also did for our top drawer here with our cutlery, we wanted to do it so that it was one big face and not two little ones. So I put two drawers together and you open it this way for the top drawer and then you pop it open and you have the knives underneath. It's also really nice because the kids can't get into this. Um, so we didn't want to have child locks where all our sharp knives were. Um, so we just lock it and, um, and then when they pull it out, they can't get into those knives. So it's like a kind of win-win on two sides of that one drawer. Because we love cooking and we are eating so much on the road, we needed a, as big of a fridge as we could get. We don't have a roof raise, so we couldn't do the tall fridges. So it took me a long time to find a short fridge that was counter depth that would fit this little area. But this fridge was awesome find and it uses almost no power. When it's running, it uses about 45 to 
75 watts. So it's really, really, really energy efficient. And it was pretty cheap because it's not a huge full size fridge with like the water dispenser and all that stuff. So I really lucked out with this Samsung fridge. I was pretty stoked. I remember in September last year, we were at my parents, and as usual, Derek was bored out of his mind, and he was scrolling on uh, Facebook or something. He was looking at buses. He was looking at, looking at conversions. He had talked to me about it in the 10 years we were together. Sometimes, like, he would, tell me, he would show me a conversion. Look how cool that is. We could go on beaches, blah, blah, blah. It would stay like that. I'm not really a camping person or you know, I'm a city girl. And anyway, at my parents, he's bored, I'm kind of bored too, and he shows me the pictures of a very nice conversion. I said, if you build me something like that, maybe I would do it. So when we were leaving my parents' house in the car, he said, so uh, are we doing it? I said, okay, let's do it. So that's it, that's how he convinced me. So we came back home, starting researching where to buy a bus realized that you should buy it in the States to have no rust because the buses in Quebec are awful. They are full of, uh, of rust. So he flew to the States, got a bus and drove it back and he started. That was uh, October 31st, Halloween. He missed the Halloween with the kids, arrived with the, with the bus right after and uh, he started the, the build. And he said to me, in three months we'll be in Mexico, baby. So a year later. Taking out my kids away from their routine, away from home, their friends and everything, that kind of scared me a little bit. And not having a space for them, because that's all they got, right? They have their beds and that's it, because there's no space here. We have the outside, of course but they also want to play with toys, so I wanted to have big drawers. So Derek made me those huge drawers, and this drawer I made for them not so long ago because the books used to be under the couch, and I, I cleared some space, and I made this huge drawer for them, and when I opened it, their eyes opened like, oh, Mommy, this is so awesome, because they love books. My kids really love, especially Isabella, she really loves uh, reading, so they feel special about it. But here, though, it's a pantry. The pantry is is, is huge it goes all the way to the to the wall so I have a lot of space so we can go Costco crazy and fill this up um, we love to go to Costco because now they have such a big selection actually this is always full <laughs> because we get like by the kilo and we have so much stuff so a shower in a tiny home and a bathroom in a tiny home is really tiny <laughs> so we wanted to make sure that we could stand up and shower and we wanted to have a little bit of a bath for our kids. Um, they love bath time. Um, so what I did is I actually made our whole entire shower out of fiberglass, which I haven't seen before. And I hate caulking and silicone because it always goes moldy and it's really gross. And I've lived on boats before. So I know that like this fiberglass is never gonna break. It's never gonna leak. It's so solid. So what I did is I made a frame out of wood and then I rolled fiberglass material all over it. So it's all one piece. I really wanted the tile look, but after debating it so many times and talking to other buses that have had tile that cracks and breaks and leaks over time, it just scared me. Um, the metal bus on the floor is just gonna take any leak and spread it everywhere underneath your floor because um, it's not gonna leak through that floor so that scared me a lot and that's why I went with an all fiberglass shower. Um, I lucked out also with my sink because my door, emergency door, is right behind this and um, we wanted to have the, f the fixture, the faucet, in the wall so that it didn't take up a lot of space on the side. So I have an extra bit of space where that door is and if there's ever any problem on that fixture in the back end, I can go back there, open the door, fix things up, and um, I'm good to go. So the toilet was, oh wow, such a frustrating part of the build. 
we were going back and forth so many times on composting toilets or flush toilets like an RV. Um, like looking at videos of people cleaning up their own poop. Like it was just dumping poop. All like the poop, <laughs> the poop section of this build was big because we obviously don't want to deal with poop. Like nobody does. But in an RV, you have to. In a bus, you have to. Um, so we ended up going with a flush toilet from an RV. So I went with this because I have a section right under the floor um, that I was able to put my black tank in. And the black tank is only the toilet. Um, so I had a, a decent size that I could put that black tank. And it gives us enough to do about 15 days um, sometimes if we're really cautious on flushing, we'll get a little bit longer, which I see it like families like our size with those composting toilets, they're a week. We custom made all of our tanks. Um, so I have a whole wash system that cleans out our whole entire black tank as clean as I think it could get, uh, even though it's a dirty process. Um, so our kids are not at the school age yet. Um, one of them is two, the other one is four, so she's just about preschool. Um, but how we're raising them is kick them outside and let them play um, like kids should. They, Isabella really loves, you know, she'll get her, hand, her hands on our phones um, whenever she can. Um, she loves stories, so she listens to like Disney stories audio. We have a pretty decent stereo system in the bus. So she puts that on the stereo in the morning and she listens to, you know, Tarzan and Hercules and all those Disney stories. But apart from that, we send her outside. They play in the dirt. We um, hike a lot. Yeah, we like to go hiking. They learn so much more. Oh, yeah. The parents, yeah. what the comments that I have from people that are back home that follows us uh, or follows our journey, they all say the same, like how wonderful it must be for the kids what they can learn it's so different from just sending your kids at daycare and then picking them up at five and they do play-doh with their friends at daycare yeah and always the same things you know yes they have a teacher that teaches them stuff but they we teach them stuff too we go outside and they learn about nature and they learn about math too and about uh the language also, and now she wants to learn Spanish, so we started a little Duolingo, and we are yeah. entrepreneurs ourselves, so we would love to teach our kids to, well, of course, if they want to do something else, that's their choice, but we want to show them that it's possible, because most people in life don't believe that it's possible to do that, to have this lifestyle, to yeah. uh, work with your laptop and go anywhere you want to go, and that's that's the life we wanted for ourselves. We made it happen by working hard, and now yeah. we're happy. <laughs> so this is our kids' bunk section. We made them to fit these IKEA mattresses so that we didn't have to get custom sheets and all that stuff. And we made them long enough so that you can get an extra one one size up mattress if the kids when the kids grow up like I can climb into these things so you'd be able to put teens in these if we ever get to that age in the bus um, it was set up for that um, we made it out of two pieces of plywood and just put them together and um, we made it so that my oldest Isabella can climb up here to get into her bed and Damien is just barely able to get in right now um, and then we did these pieces up high so that they wouldn't roll out. But we wanted to have like something that was cut out so that it wasn't just a wall or it wasn't rails so that it looked kind of like a cage. So my dad actually designed this on CAD and everything and we cut it all out and it pieced together super nice. We love the look of it. So in the back part here we have our closet. Yeah, we've got our whole entire closet here hanging and then we have some space on the bottom to sh for shelves. Up top we have another shelf and then um, I did full-size drawers that pull all the way out for socks, boxers, you know, underwear, stuff like that. But everything else pretty much gets hung. Uh, this is our master bedroom. So we lucked out and we got a king-size bed. Um, it's two mattresses. 
that we put together because this bed does slide all the way back. Uh, the mattresses stack on top of each other and it slides all the way back because under all of this is my desk. I work online, um, I teach people how to sell products online and I have my own e-commerce stores. So it's really important for me to be able to work while we're traveling. Um, but we also had space for a two-in-one washer dryer. Um, I had to cut into the floor to drop it an extra two inches so that everything was, you know, sort of low. Uh, but it works perfectly. Um, and we don't use the dryer side of it at all because we're in warm climates. So everything dries in two hours hanging outside. Um, but we really love the washer dryer. Uh, I was just speaking with somebody the other day and they're like, well, maybe we just go to the laundromat. But that's your time that you're sitting there at a laundromat um, when you could go and fill up your tank, do your laundry, go fill up your tank again. It's going to be the same price, but you don't have to sit at some laundromat where, you know, mechanics are washing their coveralls and everything with the same laundry machine as your clothes. Apart from that, we love the bed. The kids play a lot on the bed because it's like a big open space. So, you know, it's like a bit of their play area as well, which is nice. I designed with somebody that had already built a full solar system using a Nissan Leaf battery. Um, we took that and we bought the new cells, which are lithium phosphate cells. They're little 3.2 volt cells, they're about that big and we built a 48 volt system. Um, it has 28 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So right now we have two our other schoolies plugged into us and they're using us as shore power because we just have so much power. And at about noon to two o'clock in the afternoon, we've gone from about 60% battery all the way up to 100% battery. Those guys drain us down to about 60% at nighttime. So we did the whole roof in solar panels. So we have nine 40 inches by 80 inch panels that are 400 watts each. Uh, so it's somewhere around 3,600 watts. And we series them and parallel them together um, down into the basement where we've got all of our um, Victron equipment. And then our internet, we have Starlink. So when we started traveling, Starlink wasn't really mobile friendly. It's not really mobile friendly right now, but it is movable. So they have changed their system since we started moving in the bus. And what you can do now in their app is you can relocate your service area within their app. And it's really easy to do. You just go in, look on their map, put where your new uh, location is gonna be. So where all these people, there was about 200 buses, I definitely had the fastest internet. It was amazing. You could stream anything. I could make my videos and publish my ads and have no problem. Uh, so this is our uh, solar system. I managed to cram it down into a little section. It's all floating off the ground just in case there's any water that flows through here. Um, I wanted it up. My uh, Victron Quattro is a um, 5,000 watt inverter. We're gonna be putting in a mini split, so it will consume a lot more power um, on startup. And um, I also use my welder uh, to build projects, so I wanted something that was gonna be able to handle the welding, my power tools, and the 5,000 was the best route to go, I guess. So that does um, charging and it does my, um, my 120 or 110 panel, um, which I have my fridge on. My water pump is a 110 uh, water pump as well. You know, plugs and outlets and stuff like that, 110. Um, our lights are all run off of a 12 volt system, but at the back here, the golf cart industry um, has gone from 48 volts down to 12 volts for a really, really long time and they have these little tiny converters that you just plug in, they're about 30 amp, and they're really cheap, maybe like 40 bucks or something like that. So I bought a couple of those, I've got a spare just in case, and it takes all of my 48 volt power, or 51, whatever you wanna call it, down to 12 volt, and then I just run little, they're like car fuse blocks, um, 
Then I run all my lights and anything that's, um, that's 12 volt off of those. So they're super simple systems. All my solar comes down um, to here. I have a 40 amp breaker for it in case I want to turn it off or in case there's a problem. Um, it's all joined up at the solar, up at the roof. So I only come down with two wires. It's uh, three series, three parallel. So it's a pretty simple system. When I was building it, it sounded a lot more complicated on paper and on YouTube videos. And then when I looked at the components, it's actually not as complicated as I thought. I ended up getting the Serbo GX, which is like the brain of the whole entire Victron. So I can control every component, how much um, is going into my batteries, how much is coming out of them, how much amperage, blah, 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 that's you, that the charge controller is using all through the Serbo GX. Um, it was a little bit more expensive than I wanted to, but this whole system, if I don't like living in the bus, I can put it into a house and power a whole entire house with it. So I thought that this is a long-term investment for me. It wasn't just, I'm buying this for the bus and maybe I'll use it a couple of years and that's it. I might take this and put it into our cabin and we'll have, you know, unlimited power. Like maybe a year before we started this or two years before we started this, like we were not wealthy people. Um, but like I changed my whole mentality and started learning about running a business. I'd never run a business before. And now, I mean, we're able to build a decent bus. You know, we never it's ours. ever. We're not renting it. In this schoolie, our plans are so flexible. Mm -hmm. you, it's not working here? Okay, well, you can just start the engine yeah. and go somewhere. Or else. if you meet new people and they want to do something that sounds interesting, then we're always open to change our plans. We're yeah. Free. We have our whole house here. Um, we have. Um, satellite internet um, so we have very high speed internet here and we can go and do anything wherever we want it's awesome we are leaving Schoolie Palooza and we are hoping to travel with other families and we're gonna do we're in a desert we love the desert right now so we're gonna do um, Arizona and New Mexico and Texas we just want to go hiking and then we really want to make it to Mardi Gras um, in New Orleans and uh, he, well, we do, we want to go to the bayou. <laughs> I need to drive a fan boat through the bayou. That's it. <laughs> then I'm like, miles. yeah, satisfied. So if you want to follow us, um, you can do that at Sunny the Schooly on Instagram. Sunny, like a sun, the Schooly, like a school. Yeah, if you're interested in uh, what we do, I do business coaching for e-commerce. Uh, you can just send us a message there. That'll be the easiest or check out our links in the description. Um, but thanks for stopping by. We'll see you on the road. road.